Milk is one of the most widely produced food items on Earth, with over 6 billion humans relying on cow's milk as a primary source of nutrition. Despite this, most people don't really think about what milk's made of, so today I'm going to extract the primary components of milk, starting with casein. Casein is the primary non-water component of milk, and makes up about 80% of its dry mass, as well as providing the white color that we associate with milk. To isolate casein, you first need to coagulate it by acidifying the milk, which causes it to clump and fall out of suspension. To do this I used one molar hydrochloric acid, but this happens naturally as milk goes bad because the bacteria that decompose milk produce lactic acid. Casein also coagulates like this when it hits the acid of your stomach, and that makes it harder to digest. And the evolutionary reason for that is that it provided young cows with a longer lasting source of energy. Anyway, getting back to the video, once the casein is coagulated, I filter it off and I'm left with this yellow liquid, which is the real color of milk. It already looks a lot less appetizing, but don't worry, it'll get a good deal worse. To that end, I next need to extract whey, but before I do that, I dump my casein out onto a paper plate to start drying it out. Casein is the protein that gives cheese its texture, and even as it is now, it's kind of jiggly and fun to play with. When I do eventually finish playing with it, I load it into a vacuum desiccator to dry completely. In the meantime, I begin the process of extracting my whey, which is another protein that makes up around 6-8% to of the dry mass of milk. Whey itself is pretty useless and typically considered a byproduct of the cheese making process. However, there are a couple things that it's used for. Primarily among them it's used to make ricotta, which is pretty mid, and aside from that it's in a lot of protein powders, but that's about it. Typically whey is obtained by simply boiling milk at this stage and collecting what's left, but I want a full separation for this project, so I use alum in addition to the heat. Alum is a really good flocculant which is going to cause the whey proteins to coagulate together so I can filter them off as you're seeing here. The whey particles are really small which makes this process take a really long time, so I did try to decant as much off the top as I could before passing the rest through the filter. Regardless, my final product is this mostly clear yellow liquid which I then reduce to 10% of its original volume by boiling it. This step of the process smells offensively like a barn, so I next add some activated carbon. The activated carbon gets rid of the smell as well as a lot of the discoloration caused by the reducing process. As a final step, I add some 2 molar sodium hydroxide and some methanol, and this serves two purposes. The hydroxide will form three salts that are insoluble in this already saturated solution. These include aluminum hydroxide, sodium chloride, and sodium sulfate. The methanol will mix with the water and create a solution that can dissolve the milk sugar without dissolving the salts. This milk sugar is called lactose, and it's the last component I want to separate here. To that end, I filter off the carbon and salts, here they are if you're interested, and I'm left with this brownish solution of lactose. It's brown due to caramelization, and it would ordinarily be white like table sugar, and I dry it off by heating it at 70 degrees celsius for about an hour. This gives it the consistency of honey, and I could go further and make it into crystals through desiccation, but I'm going to throw this away anyway, so I decide to stop here. Here I've got the fully desiccated casein and whey from earlier. I got a lot of casein and I didn't get much whey, which I expected, but I kind of expected a little more whey and I think a little just slipped through the filter. In any case, that's the entire process and these are the three primary components of milk. Technically there's more in milk than this, but it's mostly micronutrients that you wouldn't be able to collect reasonable amounts of anyway. I hope you found this interesting and if you want to see more science, consider giving me a follow.